Hello, I'm Bird, and welcome to the channel and welcome to episode three of Rebuilding Manchester United. Now, I think you thought this was over. Now, I thought it was over too. I did say three episodes max unless I feel like I've achieved something. And I, I think we achieved something in the two seasons I did with Manchester United. You know, we did well. We got Champions Leagues. We won a Premier League as well. We were battling out with Liverpool. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I've been playing a lot of Football Manager recently. I've been off quite a bit. I'm now back in work for ages. I'm doing nine days on the run. But today I've got a bit of spare time. And I have been playing as my personal save with Manchester United. I enjoyed it that much. I thought I wanted to do one more season at least. Because I had so much fun uh, battling it out with Liverpool. I just felt like I wanted to know what happened. And now I've finished that season and I've got a spare hour. I thought why not film it and why not share it with you. Especially because the Manchester United episodes have been the most um, watched in the entire Rebuild series. So I have done a third season and we're going to look at it together. So hopefully you're alright with this. Um, hopefully you're going to like it enough to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new. And if you are new, go and check out all my other content. The Rebuild series with different teams. Uh, I've got my story based experiments as well. Um, now also, if you're wondering, if you did watch the episode 3 of Weirder, Weirder Bremen, um, you'll have noticed that the next big rebuild I'm doing is with Everton. That's still happening. Um, I'm in the process of playing that too. That's going to be coming out over the course of the following week. But for now, we're back in Manchester. We're back with the biggest club in the world, my Manchester United. What did I get up to in Season 3? Let's find out. So let's have a quick recap on the previous two seasons, just in case you've forgotten. Now, obviously, Manchester United aren't what we... We're not what we used to be. Um, but they're still financially backed on the game. And you, on the game, I know United have spent a lot of money in real life, but on the game, they do spend crap tons of money. You can do if you really, really want to. You can stretch that fi them finances well far, and they just keep on rolling in every year. So you can achieve a lot with a team like this. And it's, I usually don't do this. I mean... Maybe you're the same, but I used to always do Man United first. I play a couple of years and I get bored because you start to win a lot. Um, even now, you know, I came in with a, a decent United side. I think we started with a great defence, really, and a good goalkeeper, and I added to it, and we did well. Um, it's not like real life. It, we could be like that in real life if we spent that little bit more on proper players instead of some of the shit. Anyway, let's forget about that. That's <laughs> I'm going to I end up going on a rant. I try not to think about it because it hurts. Let's talk transfers. And I'd say two players that my first team have gone um, and I've brought in two. Now, I didn't want to change things up. Even though we didn't win the Premier League last year, I still thought we could probably win it this year, even if I didn't make any changes. And I've made quite a lot of changes, I, over, especially that first season. So, you know, this game's like real life. When you don't, when you don't make a lot of changes, you've got a good team. They get to know each other, don't they? And they start playing better all the time. And I knew that would happen. But, you know, sometimes you get bids in for players that you think, I can't say no to that. Now, Inter Milan came in with a bid for this guy and I got 60-odd million from him, which is insane because I don't think he's worth it and he's not worth it now. Um, but they wanted him. He's a great prospect. He's good. Look, he's been a floater for me the last two years. He can play right back, he can play centre-half, he can play midfield. But I didn't really need him. I had another spare midfielder who, again, a team came in for, offering me a fair amount of money for him as well and ask again I don't think he's worth it and he's not but I snapped the rand off right because now I wanted to keep him I quite liked him squad player but I've got James Garner who is a young player at the start of this game he's a, he's a good prospect and he'd been out on loan last year so I thought if we can get money for this geezer let's promote Garner to be like that sixth spare midfield man and cash in now let's go to the ins and there's only two now there's also another out that I'm saving but let's explain the timeline. When I first started to do the rebuild series, I did Manchester United first. I was off for the week, so I played all my United, then I played all of Milan, and then I started the third one. Um, but then when I, this, when I had the data film, I thought, do you know what? Let's start with Milan first, just to be different. So I started with Milan. So that means I found out about this geezer after I've made the first two Uniteds, if you get what I mean. Am I confusing you? Whatever. So I know this guy is brilliant now. So in my third season at United, I put a bid in for him and I've bought him. He's going to come in, he's going to challenge for that left wing. He can play on the right wing. I'm really, I'm, he's a great player. If he can do for me here what he did for me at Milan, happy days. Now, this is my out. Now, this is quite a, a bit of a story. I'll try and tell it you quickly. Um, Paris Saint-Germain 
came in and they offered me about 70 odd million for him. I said no, because I didn't want to sell him at first. He's had two good years with me. He scores a goal every other game, right? And he's still only 27. He's a good player. I like him. Um, he's a poacher as well. He fits my tactic, all that. Anyway, they came back and I said no. They came back again with about 90 million. And I thought, well, they really want him. Now, he didn't get unsettled or anything. He was fine. But then I looked. I was just looking for players anyway. And I noticed two players wanted to sign for me at the very top of the list. One was Neymar, who I don't like as a person. I don't like. He's good on the game, though, but he seems to get injured a lot. And the other one was Mbappe, who was unhappy. And I thought, why is he unhappy? Now, he'd lost faith in his manager. Now, these little things can only pop up sometimes. You need to hopefully be lucky enough to, to capitalise on them. And sometimes you could call this tapping up, but I do this quite a lot. I don't really talk about it. But sometimes if I know a player wants to join me, um, I'll put a bid in that I know is going to get rejected because then they'll reject it, the club, and the player gets pissed off. So I put a bid in for him because I've wanted him. I've never had him on, F on 2019. I want to know how good he is. I nearly got him on me Denton Villa series near the end when he was like 34. I couldn't get him then, but he got pissed off. So I thought, they want a card here, I want Mbappe. So I put a deal together. And I bought um, bloody Mbappe, eh? Him and Rashford up top this year, super excited. Now he's cost me 100, 120 million and Icardi as part of the deal. So yeah, maybe I overpaid. But do you know what? I think I've got probably the best young player in the game. And because I've been playing this game all year, I've looked at him a million times. He wins Ballon d'Or's galore. So super happy. Not too much upheaval. We've got a world-class goalkeeper with a great prospect in Dean Henderson at the back. I've got a great back four. Luke Shaw's great. Luke Shaw is great on this game. Wambasaka becomes good on this game. Lindelof's great, better than he is in real life. And Maguire, them four are set up now. In the middle, we've got Ndidi, who is great in my tactics, sitting in that defensive midfield role. I've got Pogba. Uh, we've got Big Sav, who wasn't that great last year, but he's too good. I nearly thought about selling him, but him and Pogba should do well for me. Um, Pajanic, we've got McTominay, and we've got Garner. Now, this is Garner, who's going to be like my sixth player. And he's all right. He's only 19. Going forward, though, excites me. I've got Rashford, who's good in this game. Mbappe. i um, got Martial on the left. Ch Chiesa, Chiesa, whatever you want to call him. I've got Dembele and Sancho on the right. We are young and we are packed with talent. This is going to be a big year, an exciting year. Now this is my staff, again my medical team, I was going to improve that throughout the year. The coaching team's the best. Now someone's asked me, how do you rebuild my staff? It's not rocket science. You basically look at what your staff you've got, see who you like. If you still, if anyone's really good, they've got an 18, 19, 20 stat and what you need, keep them, sack the rest off and just go out there and get new ones. It's that easy. If you want an assistant manager, look for an assistant manager who's got assistant manager stats. You need an attack coach, look for attack coaching. Do you know what I mean? It's that easy. Now, I'll show you the money in a minute because the money here is crazy. It's crazy. And we've, we've nearly paid our net debt off, so the, the debt that's always been saddled on us. And we've got transfer debt, but we just have so much coming in. It don't matter. It don't matter. And they've improved the training facilities, uh, the youth facilities. We're getting a new affiliate club, hopefully. So we've already got Houston Dynamo. I wanted another one because you can have two somewhere out in um, the Far East or, you know, like China or something bringing more money from merchandise sales. And they're expanding the stadium. And I still have 137 million in the bank. I've just got 20 to spend, although I don't need to spend it. I've got wiggle room in my wage budget if I wanted to spend more money, but we have got a, I've got a great team. I have got two top, 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 top players in every position. But what do the bastard Glaziers want me to do this year? Well, they want me to win the Premier League. They want me to get to the final of the Champions League. They're not bothered about the Super Cup against Leipzig. I am. Uh, they want me to get to the final of the FA Cup. They're not bothered about the League Cup, which I'm not bothered about because we keep winning that. And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not that bothered about it. But I'd like to do the Champions League again. And that'd be cool. But mainly, I want that Premier League. And the bookies believe we're the team to do it. Now, um, we've got my back four is the back four in the Premier League, which is cool. I mean, Maguire's good. Lindelof's been, become way better than I thought. I don't know if the guy's tweaked him or not, but... He has, he's great, so I'd, I'd say Van Dijk is better, but it is what it is. Pogba and Mbappe in the midfield with De Bruyne and Eriksen, that's pretty cool. And you've got Rashford and Salah up top. Um, I went to play Mbappe up front, but 
I mean, that's the good thing about him. I can switch him with Rashford. Everyone can switch. Martial can play out wide. He can go up top. Rashford can play it wide and go up top. Now we're going to be starting the season um, playing at home, Old Trafford on TV against West Bromwich Albion. So I want to get that one. Let's do well in that. I'd rather play the Super Cup first, if I'm honest. But obviously we're not in the uh, Community Shield because we run up in a league and we lost the FA Cup. So that'll be Liverpool Southampton who played in that, won't it? And then we've got Southampton next, which a bit of revenge there, hopefully. So with that, let's jump forward, like we always do, to the 1st of January. Let's see what I got to. Well, let's start off with the Carabao Cup. And we'll start off with the third round. We play chart on the way. I kind of rotated a bit. We had some big players play. Uh, and we absolutely annihilated them. Martial got two goals. Pogba got two goals. And Mr. Milan himself, my uh, centre-half, he scored. But then, boom. Uh, got to the fourth round. Played Stoke at Old Trafford. I played a pretty good team. I give Garner a game, though. Um, Axel Rose got a game. Henderson in net as well. And we absolutely dominated the game. We still dominated it. Look at the freaking chances. They just got a goal in the night. <laughs> now I look at this as a big one. The board don't look at it as a big one, but it's the battle of the European champions. So we are the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate champion of all of Europe. And um, we beat Leipzig in the final 3-0. Mbappe bagging me two goals. He played up front in this game. So before we look at the Premier League, let's look at the Champions League group stage. And we drew PSG. So they had one of our... Good players. We've got one of their good players. So I was excited with these two games. Um, and we didn't get beat. We didn't get beat. Um, we had Valencia as well. They were a good team. FC Red Bull. Mm, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we only drew We drew one game. That was against Valencia in Spain. We won the other five. So we beat PSG twice. 2-0, 1-0. And we beat Valencia at home as well. So even when it, when it, when it drew, instantly thought, it's just going to be a case of who's top and who's second between us and Paris. They're not making this one easy for me, are they? We're going to be facing Real Madrid, kings of the tournament. Real Madrid, wow. PSG have got Liverpool. That's a toughie. It's the 1st of January and here's the Premier League. And we have only drawn one game. We are undefeated. We're going for the invincible season. I think only Arsenal have ever done it, I think. Could we do it? Well, I've, I don't think I've, I've never done it. I've never done it on any save. I think I've come close and lost a game. So that was quite cool. But, you know, big teams. It's a tough, tough league. We've only conceded four goals. Four goals. Four. How good's that in 19 games? Going forward, we're scoring goals, but we're not out there more than anyone else, I suppose. There are someone two goals behind us. Liverpool aren't far. You know, all the big guys are up here. That's probably why we're all at the top of the league. So, yeah. It's been great. Let's have a look at some of the players. Now, here's my squad. Arranged by average rating. And it says a lot here, doesn't it? Even players who have only played 12 games compared to some who've played 26. But you can see the average ratings. And it's the majority of the lads have got over 7, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, Luke Shaw's up there at the top. But he's been sharing that role, really, with Grimaldo. They've been neck and neck. And look at him. That is something special, I think. Uh, there's Mr. Pajanic. Brilliant player. Uh, Rashford as well. Scoring goals. Last time you saw us, you knew we were in the process of getting a new affiliate. Well, we've got one. Now, when I'm in the United and teams like that, I just want to make as much money as possible. And I always try and get these two first. And then I might try and get teams I can loan players out to. That's in like a long-term kind of save. But with these, if you get one in America, China, Japan, I think Australia sometimes will do that for you. Uh, South Korea, the merchandise affiliates. So you're getting extra money merchandise. It's a financial benefit for both teams, like it says. So before we look at all the results, let's share this one, because it's great. Beating Liverpool 3-0 at Old Trafford. Mbappe and Rashford getting the goals. We dominated them. Can't stop winning. We drew against Arsenal, so fair play to them. I mean, the only team that's kept holding their manager. I mean, we were crap in this game. But apart from that, we score goals, we do enough, and we keep clean sheets. And that's going to... Going to get your points and going to win you league titles. So, yeah. Oh, don't forget. Let's have a quick look at that. Dirty Leeds, 3-0 at Ellen Road. Now, don't forget, one of my main reasons, one of my main goals, not just to go head-to-head -head with Liverpool again, try and win that title back, but one of the main reasons I wanted to play a third season, just for me, was I wanted to go to the World Club Championships. I love becoming world champion. I love saying I'm the world champ. Do you know what I mean? The proper world champ. <laughs> And obviously with Man United, we come in at the semi-final stage and we played one of America's best teams, Los Angeles FC. But then we became world champs. But was it that easy? No. You're looking at it thinking 3-0, but look a little closer. It was random as shit. We got to full-time 
<laughs> they've scored three goals in injury time. Um, Big Sav scored and uh, Marcus Rashford. I mean, Big Sav had one of his breakout standout games. When he, when he's, he's on fire sometimes. Now, my next game is going to be in the FA Cup. So that's going to be kicking off. Another tournament. Wow. Like tournament central. But we are on fire. We're unstoppable. We're unstoppable. Can't wait. Got Real Madrid in the Champions League. Starting on our FA Cup journey. We're champions of the freaking world. So we get a nice fancy gold badge on our kits. Top of the league. Undefeated. It's gone way better than I ever thought. So I thought we'll start here with the FA Cup. We'll just have a quick look at all the results in one. And as you can see, we have just kept on winning and we are in the FA Cup final against, and this is no offence to anyone who is a Southampton fan or a Palace fan, but they're like teams you wouldn't necessarily think could get there, which is amazing. And look at last year. I thought the FA Cup final was a given. I thought we won this, Southampton. And Southampton beat us. So this year I was like, fair, fair enough. It's Crystal Palace. But anything can happen in a cup final. Now let's jump over to the Premier League and we've won it. I've got games left to play, four games left and we've won it. We've still not been beaten. But now we've won it, I'm a bit worried that we probably will get beat. You know, take, you know you're not asked to win it. We've won the league. Will they stay committed and focused? I'll have to wait and see. Rashford is uh, behind Aubameyang in the goal scoring charts. Uh, I've got the three best players in the league. Pajanic is just awesome. I've never had him before in this game. Brilliant player. Now what's helped is we have just kicked on and scored crazy goals. Four games left, I think we're definitely going to score over 100. We've been unstoppable. Unbloody stoppable. I kind of get to... It sounds really lazy, but I'm getting to the point where... It's so bad. I know it sounds bad. I'm playing a game. And I'm Sam on the couch. My wife's on the other couch. My son's... And I'm like playing with my son. I'm not even hardly even paying it any attention. Because it's just... A, it's, it's just we're like a machine. So I can just give a team so I can press play. I might mess about for it. Come, oh, it's our time, is it? Team talk, do this. And I'll wait a bit, might make a sub. Honestly, my eye is not on it. Because it's just gets that you can get to that stage, can't you? You may you may have done it yourself. I'll reverse the dates. My heads will be in the way. So um yeah, got a revenge on Southampton and look at some of them results. We beat Burnley 7 0, Watford 5 1, Arsenal 3 0. Man City we drew with, to be fair, on TV at, at Old Trafford. Um, we drew with Brighton, but no, no one can score against us. But could we take this un unstoppable, unbelievable form into Europe? Well, as you know, we had Real Madrid um, and we played them away in the first leg, first knockout round. And we drew 1-1, Paul Pogba got our goal, they scored early doors. And then we brought them back to Old Trafford where we just pounded and pounded and pounded them. We just pounded them, like, never stopped pounding. And we drew... Our uh, fourth, fifth biggest rival, Manchester City. Again, we couldn't beat them. We drew against them. We drew them a lot this year, haven't we? What the frig? I mean, they've got Delit, Laporte, Mende, Navas in goal. They bought that geezer, can't say his name, in the middle. Foden's a great player, but I just felt like they didn't take it serious. Like they rested players. And we've now got to play in the semis. I haven't played them yet at this point. Uh, and we've drawn Atletico Madrid, who has still got... One of my favourite managers, best managers in the game, Diego Simeone in charge. And you might be thinking, you beat Madrid, these will be easier. I don't think so. If we go for their league, I mean, they're not top of it, they're second. But they're only three points behind Barcelona. Games left to play. Miles ahead of Real Madrid. So this is the running at this point, And it was getting excited. <laughs> Could we just steamroll everything? I mean, apart from the Carabao Cup, we were world champions. I mean, the FA Cup final. We've already won the league. But I've got to play Everton, Bournemouth, Leicester and Chelsea. Now the chances, I just worry that we might take me out of the ball. Plus I was going to maybe rest the player even there and concentrate on obviously the Champions League and so on. So it's going to be interesting really. I know we've done really, really well and we seem unstoppable. But you never know, do you? You never know. But I was going to have to do it without the French connection. Uh, Paul Pogba's just pulled his hamstring. We don't know how long he's going to be out for yet. So that could be really bad or it might not be too bad. We'll have to wait and see. Mbappe is out for six weeks. Well, it's in the season. I thought we'd start with the Premier League because you knew we'd won it. But did we finish it undefeated? Yes, we did. Invincibles 2. That's who we are. Manchester United. We played 38, won 35, drawn three games. Didn't lose a game. The goal difference was insane compared to everyone else. No one was taking this away from us this year. We were deserved winners. Now, obviously, we're in the FA Cup final against Crystal Palace, but you might not notice, but Crystal Palace are not in the Premier League. No, they're in the Championship 
and they finished ninth. So they're not even getting in the playoffs, they're not coming up, they're staying in the championship. I felt a bit more pressure. We've been so bloody good, right? But we lost to Southampton last year. I mean, losing to Crystal Palace, no offence, in the state they're in right now would be embarrassing. And in that first game, we did okay. I mean, I think we should have scored more. I thought we could have put this game to bed with the amount of chances we created. We create a lot sometimes. I don't get them all on target, but two goals. We won 2-1. Um, red cards, yellow cards. It was a bit. We had a couple of injuries as well. But we did enough. We went to their place. We got an away goal. We drew 1-1. Again, the game was a bit meh. It was a battle, really. We didn't really dominate either game, I don't think. Now, we've knocked out Real Madrid. We knocked out Atletico Madrid. We were going to have to get past one. Some might say the biggest Spanish team left. Yep, it was going to be Barcelona, who ended up finishing second in the league. Behind Atletico Madrid. How good's that? Atletico Madrid, by the way. I've done that back-to-back -back now. They've won back-to-back -back titles under Simeone. Damn right we did it. I don't I don't know if it was ever in doubt, to be fair. Um, it was, actually. It wasn't a great game again. We kind of battled our way through, really. Um, the third-choice centre-half ended up getting man of the match and scoring in the seventh minute. We got a goal in the eighth minute. I'm thinking, wow, we're going to do a Man City here and beat, get set, score seven against Barca. Didn't happen. We didn't score again, uh, and they scored on the death in the 94th minute. Apart from the Carabao Cup, brilliant, brilliant. Honestly, honestly, it did feel like at times a bit automated, like I was just clicking, um, which bores me because I do like to feel like I'm doing more. Like I'm, I just felt like I've got to a point with the players and this tactic where. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to do much. That's just how it feels. Do you know when you just keep winning and winning and winning? Especially like we were. Not conceding. And I mean, Europe was a bit tough. But, wow. Let's have a quick look at some of my key players. And my two best players this year are players I've brought in as good squad players, really. And ended up being my two best. Obviously, this geezer at the top, Mr. Pajanic. Uh, who is great. He's great, isn't he? 31-year-old Bosnian. Had a fantastic year. Grimaldo ended up pushing Luke Shaw out. I know he's a good young player in. And Luke Shaw's good, but he was just... He loves this tactic. Maybe because he's a wing-back. And like I said, the money just keeps rolling in. I think we've paid our net debt off as well this summer. Um, we've still got about 50... Well, quite a lot more than that. Quite a lot in transfer debt, but look. That happens every year. It's the same with Man City and PSG. It happens every year, so... You look how much I've spent we go i hope you enjoyed this unexpected part three to rebuilding manchester united it was a bit it was fun for me like i said i never planned on making this i just thought i wanted to have a go for fun myself and then i just thought why not why not make it a video and see if anyone's interested in watching it definitely the end and i am not even playing it offline it's too i mean with that kind of money i'm just gonna go out and buy someone a world class again and dominate again yeah nah i'm done with it but it, it was it was fun to at least get us not only back on top of the world, but really right on back, right back on top of the world. I mean, Jesus. So yeah, hopefully you if you're a United fan or not, you enjoyed it enough to smash a like button. Uh, I really do appreciate it. If you want to help the channel out that little bit more, keep it going, keep my wife off my back, you can support it by pledging to my Patreon. You'll find a link to that down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support with the channel. I've recently hit 10,000 subscribers. So again, thank you to every one of you. You're amazing. Thank you. I never thought I'd do that, so I feel really honoured and I really do appreciate it. You've been amazing. I've been booed. I'll see you next time.